Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Event Icons. I am your host, Laura Lopez of Social Tables. Um, we have an awesome show lined up today. Um, and if you aren't familiar with Event Icons and this is your first time logging on, welcome. Uh, Event Icons is our weekly show held every Wednesday where we interview the coolest people in the events industry. And uh, it's really your show, and it's your time to ask these event icons any questions you have about anything at all. So this is as much of uh, your show as it is ours. So thanks so much for joining us. Um, and if you want to ask any of these event icons a question in today's chat, uh, be sure to throw them into wherever it may be. Uh, throw it into the uh, questions pane, and we'll answer them throughout the day. Also. Uh, to make this most fun episode possible um, and to get the most people in the room, be sure to share this show. Um, it's going to go on for an entire hour, so be sure to tweet it, um, tag all of the panelists in it, and uh, let's get the biggest audience possible. So um, today's show is uh, its one that I'm super, super excited about. Um, we are going to be talking about the Student Event Planners Association, SEPA, uh, as it will be known from here on out. Um, we have um, Aubrey Nowiski, Kelly Treadway, Kathy Newby, and Kate Pate. So um, I guess let's just go ahead and get started. Uh, do you all want to go ahead and introduce yourselves and um, tell us what your name is, uh, which company you work for, and how you got involved with SCPA? So of course, um, we will start with the lovely Aubrey Nowiski. Aubrey, take it away. All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. So my name is Aubrey No Whiskey, like no beer, no wine, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I am the very proud founder and board director for the Student Event Planners Association. So I've been involved with SEPA since conception in 2009 at Texas State University, and we've since expanded nationwide. Awesome. Hi, everyone. I'm Kelly Treadway with Event Curious. Uh, Event Curious is a boutique marketing agency for special event companies and for special events and live events. And I got involved with SCPA um, by first getting to know Aubrey, and who's an amazing young woman and doing amazing things, and um, got to learn more about SCPA and expressed wanting to, to have more interaction with the members and be more of a resource for them. And so that's how I got in, pulled into the advisory board. Hi everybody, I'm Kathy Newby. I am currently with Hashtag Ask for Kathy, which is an independent production management company, but I do have uh, 22 years of event rentals under my belt, everything from uh, tabletop to tenting and full logistics um, of uh, events, uh, whether they be corporate or social, uh, big or small. Um, I got involved with SEPA about a year and a half or two years ago, starting as a mentor for the different students throughout the United States and now currently with these other ladies sit on the advisory board um, to help make sure that uh, the people coming into our industry are uh, well educated, understand what they're getting into and what the importance um, of being a professional event uh, person is all about. And I'm Kate Pate. I'm the executive director for Creative Coverings. I'm also a lecturer at the International School of Hospitality in Las Vegas and on the Search Foundation Board of Directors. And when I met Aubrey, I knew I had to be a part of SEPA as well. It's really the upcoming and premier organization for student event planners. And she was just so dynamic, as was her board. And it's a privilege to be a part of this great organization. Great. So that leads me to my very first question here. Thank you, Kate. Is what exactly is SEPA for anybody who is learning about it for the first time here today? And how is it impacting the events industry? It sounds like everybody sort of touched on it, but um, so Aubrey, I guess we'll start with you again. Um, why did you start it um, and how is it impacting events? Absolutely. So the Student Event Planners Association caters to the younger generation within the events industry. Specifically, we're 
are targeting millennials at this current juncture, but eventually will evolve to Gen Z and so on and so forth. So our whole mission is to develop student event planners into professionals. And of course, with the name Student Event Planners Association, my honest belief and opinion is that you are always a student and you never stop learning. However, those crucial years when you're starting your career, uh, just graduating from school, um, you really need a helping hand to help you discover what niche you want to go into and help pursue that, have the connections and the network that you need because we all know that your network is your net worth and it's all about who you know, especially in this industry. So it's really focusing on them and their personal and professional development through our programs, through our chapters and the professional speakers that come in, uh, mentorship, hands-on experience. We provide all of those things to help develop these individuals into well-rounded and highly sought-after future event professionals. Underlining mission is that we're developing more than future event planners. We're also developing leaders, which is something that not just our industry needs, but the world needs. And one of our big pushes um, is that millennials have been described as lazy and tired titled narcissist and I call bullshit on it all the time, sorry dude, um, because the people that I work with every day um, throughout our organization at a regional or, or local level and a national level do not fit that stereotype at all and it's my objective to help push them to the forefront and let them shine and show the future you know, excuse me, the previous generations that we are capable and that we want to learn from them more than anything. So SCPA is not about saying millennials are the best generation, here we come. If anything, we're here saying, hey, we need you to, to feed into us, to invest in us. We need to come together um, and figure out how we can bridge this gap between generations in the industry so that we can truly move forward and duplicate that ex success when Gen Z come into play. And where did the idea of forming this amazing advisory board of um, board of directors for SEPA? It was birthed at the special event conference in 2016, yeah, this year. Um, I had uh, Nick Borelli who had approached me and also Aaron Kaufman, and, and they were like, you really need to have an advisory council. <laughs> <They're excited. laughs> you really need to have an advisory council. Agreed to your first members. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I, met, I ran into Kelly. Uh, we had said of a meeting to me and like right after I met with Nick and she's like you know do you have an advisory council because I'd love to be on the advisory council and I'm like um, actually we're in the process of forming it so yeah and then um, Kathy has has been a mentor for our organization for several years and her and I have corresponded for a while now and so invited her and then of course Kate Patay, the Kate Patay so um, she I had met the previous year at TSC and uh, when putting the feelers out there, she had also kind of raised her hand, and I was really excited about that. So now we have a mastermind alliance to help make sure that we're getting the guidance that we need. And again, that support from the different generations within the industry, um, and also every single person on, on the advisory council has affiliations with other professional organizations in the industry. So it's not necessarily being loyal to any one of those in one of those organizations, but more so loyalty to the industry as a whole and making sure that it moves forward and we're all in alignment on that. I love that. Um, so I guess let's sort of change gears here. So um, Kathy, you actually mentioned that you serve as a mentor to some of these students that you chat, that you chat with. Um, so my question for you, and actually we'll, we'll rotate because um, I'd love to hear from all of you is um, what is a common challenge that you're hearing from students who are looking to get in the industry? Um, is there a commonality between some of the things that students are voicing? What are you hearing? Um, I think the, the biggest thing is um, it's not just about wedding. Uh, that there are so many different niches within the event industry, whether you're a vendor like uh, Kate and I are, or if you're on the creative end, like Kelly, um, and getting them to understand um, it's, it's an amazing industry to be in, but it's, it takes a lot of work. If you're looking at um, a Monday through Friday job from 9 to 5, this is not the industry to get into. Um, for instance, I just did an event for the Golden State Warriors uh, last week. And in three days, um, I walked 22 and a half miles based on my steps on my iPhone. So, uh, and this was just at somebody's house. So, yeah. um, it's, I think that's the common thing is um, letting them know that there are so many different areas that they can work in, uh, whether it's the food and beverage side or the rentals or the creative end, um, that 
it, it's not just a straight and narrow road and they just really need to find what interests them and where they want to be um, and doing their internships with different uh, companies to find out geez, maybe food service really isn't what I thought it was, um, and uh, find what they really want to do. So that's been the biggest thing, is just opening their eyes to all the different areas within the industry. Mm -hmm. And Kate, I know that you are a faculty member at the International School of Hospitality in Vegas. Um, and so do you hear anything from, you know, maybe within the, the walls of the classroom, that student's voice where it's a challenge or um, something that is, I don't know, maybe they perceive to be really scary about the industry or a misconception. What are you hearing in the classroom? You know, I think the biggest thing is helping them to find their voice and find those internships and not be afraid to ask for, you know, give me more, let me learn. I'm always encouraging them to be a sponge. You know, never say no to any opportunity, regardless of what it is, whether it's setting up, striking, you know, writing emails, whatever that might be, because you're going to learn so much about the industry and be so much more well-rounded. But you have to go and ask for it, because people aren't going to come and search you out. It's finding your voice and reaching out and creating your network, like Aubrey had touched on, of meeting people and not being afraid to say, you know, what can I do? How can I help? And just jumping right in. Mm -hmm. And Kelly, what about you? So you, you're on the, more on the creative side, correct? I am, yeah. And I haven't had the opportunity to be a, a mentor yet, but I look mm -hmm. forward to that with SCPA. Mm -hmm. um, but I've done, I think I've done a couple of, of chats with the members, and mm -hmm. um, I think my, my biggest thing for them is to, to encourage them to build their network because you never know whether it's a millennial or, or one of us or someone that we can introduce them to, you never know where you're going to need that person to cross a bridge to get to the next level of where you're trying to go. So the networking part of it is so important in our industry. It's a large industry, but it's a small world. <laughs> there are all these little small worlds within it. it well, really and one of the is. things I'd been told a while ago, and I tell every student I talk to, every organization, is when you're joining an organization or being part of this, it's like going to the gym. My good friend Daniel Cowick from Magnolia Bluebird first gave me that analogy, mm -hmm. and she had said, you can't sign up for a gym membership and just have your name on a roster and expect to lose 10 pounds and all of a sudden have great abs. You need to put work and effort into it to achieve those goals. So it's the same when you're part of any kind of organization, is it's taking the legwork, get on the board, you know, join a committee be involved, be present. That's how you're going to get your most ROI. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What I love about it, though, is that it's a student organization run by students for students. It's unique in the industry and completely unique to when I was in school. I mean, when I was in school, there wasn't NACE or Aaliyah or ISIS. It wasn't any of that. So the opportunities that they have, it's um, as I, I emailed with one of them today with Rihanna, and I think is how you say your name. Um, I was telling her I'm quite jealous. I wish I was 20 years younger to experience being a, an SCPA member. So. Mm -hmm. so one of the beauties of SCPA is that it is nationwide. There's tons and tons of chapters. It's far-reaching, um, which is super exciting. So um, my other question, kind of piggybacking off what Kelly mentioned, is the fact that you know it is such a big industry but it's a really small world. So um, for these student chapters, um, and Aubrey, I'll ask you this, is how do these individual chapters add value to the um, overall mission of SCPA? And um, if I'm a student at a super small school, but there's an events program, how do I go about starting a chapter where I'm at? Great, great question. So I always preach to our leadership that the National Board of Directors is like the air cover and that our chapters are like the ground forces, that both of us have different vantage points. They can see things on the ground level that we can't see or don't know what are going on, and we similarly can see things at a high level, industry-wide, et cetera, that they don't necessarily see. So that marriage between the two is crucial to our success, and I'm couldn't be more proud of having to plug to our board of directors, which, um, as Kelly mentioned, our entire leadership team 
ground level two national board of directors are all made up of existing student members or alumni of our organization. So everyone is a millennial, everyone's invested in our success. And a lot of um, our chapter development teams specifically are past presidents of our existing chapters. And they've since gone on and graduated, but they're still so invested in seeing that these future leaders have everything that they need to be successful. And if anything, just being that friend, that resource that they can call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We are very, as you can expect, non-traditional in our communication methods. It's literally Facebook inbox messages or text messages or send me a tweet. I don't care. I always say, however you wanted to contact me, you know, reach out to me. And I think that's the other thing that's special about our organization is I don't see levels. I never have been that way. We truly are a family and we truly are a team that's working together. So whenever I go speak to different chapters or have phone conversations with the leaders, they have my direct cell phone number. Like they have me on Facebook. So they can send me a message at any time. And I know I get messages from leaders all the time saying, hey, I know you're extremely busy and um, you know, I, I, give me your email address and I'll send you a more phone email. And I'm like, no, no, no. You can send me a Facebook message. It's totally fine. I love, you know, whatever way you want to get in contact with me. Um, and as far as chapter development concerned, it's very, very simple and it's just a fact of life. If you can find one leader who has the passion, that's all that you need to get a chapter established at any school. Um, we do have a system in place, a process, and guide them through that entire process, but really it's just finding someone who has the interest and in getting a chapter started. I have a call with them and go over the steps with them. They confirm with their school what the requirements are, and then we work to give them whatever resources it is that they need to satisfy those needs. We work with them to promote on and off campus to fill their leadership team and and um, just some strategies and tips around how to do that. And within, I mean, we've had people establish chapters in a matter of weeks. Like, it's ridiculous. Wow. Um, so it takes one person. And how many chapters are there currently? There are, uh, it fluctuates, but there are about 30 chapters in existence right now. And we have over 100 chapter interest forms in our database that we're working through. Uh, and those are not just nationwide, those are worldwide. Um, I currently am holding back the floodgates on international expansion until we have things solidified here at home. Thank Perfect. You. Yes. That was awesome. Very cool. <laughs> um, awesome. Um, so let's sort of pivot here and let's talk about um, students. So obviously this is a uh, SEPA show. So um, I'll pose this one to Kate. Here's a question for you. Um, what's a tip for students looking to get their dream job in events? Oh, that goes back to be willing to do anything. If mm -hmm. you know what direction you want to head in, I mean, I think all of us have started at some point. I did catering and events for 15 years before crossing to the dark side of being a vendor. But, you know, I, I started in every side of it. I wasn't afraid to say no to any single job out there. So I think mm -hmm. be open to take whatever you have to to get your foot in the door for it. It's, it's that hard work that's going to show at the end of the day. Because like Aubrey touched on, there is that stigma of a millennial, whereas especially with her group, her group. I don't see that at all. I see some of the hardest working people out there. If any one of them came to me tomorrow and said, I'd like to come in and start, I would find a space for them regardless. Mm -hmm. So just don't be afraid to take whatever's out there and show that you've got the chops because especially in this industry, I feel like personally, we very much promote based on merit and what you get done. It's not how many years you've been here. It's really your output and, and what you contribute as a whole. Katie, back on that, Kate actually recently posted a job opportunity, and I cannot tell you how many people inbox message me from my leadership saying, I need to move, I need to move now, I have to go and go work for Kate. <laughs> like, I would it. take any of them too, just so you know. Any one of them that Kate Marino, they're it. I will let them know. So who's, who here is hiring? I hope there are students that are locked. Mm -hmm. Contact her if you're looking for a new gig. Awesome. Um, and also, Kate, just a follow-up question. You mentioned that you've done a lot of different jobs in events. What's the weirdest job that you've had in events? Oh, gosh, the weirdest Actually, one? let's just ask that question of everybody, too. I'm sure everybody's got a weird job. That would right? be cool. Right. Yeah. I was a catering manager back in New York and was helping to get an event set up and they didn't have their mascot come in. The guy no showed him. And they literally looked at me and said, can you, I put on a bear suit, you guys. I was like a six foot tall bear with a screen for my face to look out of it. And I stood there for an hour and like played hacky sack with people in this room and interacted. I'm like, how did this become my life? 
But, you know, I I jumped in, we made it happen. No one had any idea that things had gone sideways. And I think that's one of the keys with an event person, the real successful ones, you find a way to get it done. It just happens, Mm -hmm. period. So I know these ladies all subscribe to that rule too. What about you, Kathy? What was your crazy one? Yeah. Um, I don't think it's, it was more of a curveball that a client threw me. Um, I was doing a, and I don't know which one it is, either an NFC or AFC championship football game. Uh, we were producing the halftime show and all the entertainment. And um, one of the entertainers, stylist, calls me and says, um, yes, we need hair extensions. And I went, it's Sunday, and you didn't bring those with you. <laughs> um, and uh, uh There was no way any of us on our staff were going to be able to get out and get back into the stadium at this point. Um, So I ended up sending her limo driver uh, with a wad of cash because uh, we found a store. Um, They wouldn't take an NFL check and um, went and bought hair extensions. So uh, that's (laughs) been one of the weirdest things that's ever been thrown to me. Wow. (laughs) These are great. These are great. Okay, (laughs) Kelly, I know you've got some good ones. Yeah, well, my background, I started in the industry and my started my career in musical theater. So I started from an acting background, moved into arts administration, and then into events. Um, So I've kind of, I, my path is circular. Um, But during those, the last two decades, during that time, at certain points, I have been a caroler for special events. So hired during the Christmas season in Victorian costume, which I have hundreds of stories about crazy events being a caroler. (laughs) Any Christmas carol, I just about know all the words do. (laughs) Aubrey, do you have have any weird jobs? I have a couple, but I guess my biggest epic fail, I guess, um, I obviously live in Texas, and we were doing an event, a client event at the Fort Worth Stockyards, which is like this historic part of Fort Worth. And um, for whatever reason, when we did the site visit, they had told us that we had the ability to move an 18-wheeler in close to proximity because I worked in oil and gas, so we were um, taking heavy oil and gas equipment and moving it into this particular space. The floors weren't even, like, I don't know why the lead coordinator thought this was a good idea, but anyway. So... um, the 18-wheeler I was trying to turn in, and ended up knocking over this historic fence in the process, <laughs> and it was god-awful, and I was mortified, and anyway, so we rectified the situation as best we could, this fence was completely ruined, but as I was checking into my hotel, which actually happened to be it shared, like it was adjacent to, um, I overheard the ladies at the, at the check-in being like, oh my gosh, did you hear that someone, some idiot knocked over at the fence? And I'm sitting there like, yeah, can I have my room? He's like, thank you. <laughs> like, wasn't me. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. Yeah. That same exact event, um, we, in oil and gas, they totally try and cut corners and don't get you the staff that you need to actually set up things, especially with heavy equipment, as I mentioned. So they had two guys from Houston who were supposed to set up this complete exhibit with all the equipment. The show was the next day, and one of the guys was a bit of a pansy and ended up pinching his nerve. I had to rush him to the hospital because we didn't know that that was the issue at that time. So he was completely out of the game. And so me and this one other exhibit guy, I was like, whatever it takes. Like, I was getting to work. We are like, polishing equipment, lifting it, busting open crates, all that kind of stuff. So you do what you have to do. But, um, yeah, that was an event that, yeah. It goes back to that rule of don't assume that people know. I always give as much and clear, concise direction as possible. I just had a timeline recently that I did for an event locally. It's a um, charitable board that I sit on that I, I host their event every year. And I gave specific directions as to how to get to the loading dock, how to pull up to it, what time it was open, who to call. And all of a sudden I hear this noise behind me and I look and they had driven their truck into the freight elevator and brought their entire truck down instead of putting it onto the cart and bringing it down in the middle of the event space. And of course the event manager was looking at me like, are these your people? And I'm like, oh, (laughs) yes. Apparently I wasn't clear enough when I said back up to the freight elevator, they backed into it. So always very clear direction. My timelines are, I think this last one was like 32 pages long for the show flow. It was crazy. Wow. Oh wow. You're always learning. Oh, <laughs> even yes. at, even when you're not a student member. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So I guess let me go back to that original question. This was a great tangent. Um, was uh, students and their dream jobs and events. Um, Kathy, what would be your number one tip for students um, who are looking to get their dream job? Um, I personally think that it's going to take them a while to find that dream job. It's not something that they're going to get right out of college. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I've, I'm still looking for my dream job. Uh, right now, working for myself is about as good as it's going to get. Um, but um, I, I don't, it's not going to happen right out of school. There are, because there are so many different niches within this industry, um, you know, again, like I said earlier, you may think you want to get into venue management and, you know, you start getting into the venue management and you've got to be there from, you know, first load in to last load out um, and dealing with clients that don't know what they want or don't have a great t timeline. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's way out there. I personally don't feel that anybody's just going to find it right away and some people never find their dream job. Um, so I think it's something that they've, again, got to go through and see what they really like and what interests them um, with the networking, you know, going to different events, seeing what all the different elements it take to put an event together. Um, so I, I, I don't know if there's really such a thing as a dream job. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Mm. I think you have to be passionate, passionate about the industry so that each yes. step along the way is a dream job because they all connect in some way. Like my career started with venue rental, moved to catering, moved to hotel catering, moved to special event rentals, and then my own company that now represents all of those types of, of companies. So it's connecting the dots and not getting frustrated along the way that that you're not where you want to be yet because it's one of those inter industries where you really do – it. it it takes learning, it takes doing it to learn, to get in the groove of it and to, to have the stories, you know, to have the, the crazy stories like we have to learn to be able to execute. So it's fine. You have it's to have ever, It's an ever-changing industry too. There's yeah. new things, new elements coming in. I mean, like Laura with social tables. I mean, I can remember the days where we sat there with our little templates and our little grid paper and we used to draw things out by hand. I mean, whoever knew we would be, you know, doing all that on CAD programs these days. So it's, it's ever changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a lot of fun too, you have to add. I mean, people watch oh, yeah. us traveling and what we're doing. We have a great time. You have to. You have to love right. what you're what you're doing for a living here but you know there's a lot of years that went into getting to that point of being the one that's mm -hmm. attending some of them because most of it is behind the scenes it looks glamorous but when you take those heels off at the end of the night it's like oof, that was a good one ask Kathy with her yeah. steps I think she's the queen of them <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and Aubrey do you um do you ever have students who come to you and say there's this job I really want I think it's my dream job what should I do or what's what's the first step I need to be taking here and maybe they don't have a network behind them um, what would you advise to him or her? All day every day I get that question. <laughs> <laughs> All day every day. Oh my God. <laughs> I gotta jump back real quick there are some individuals one in particular that comes to mind her name is Katherine Rupke and she is a phenomenal leader in our organization who did land her dream job straight out okay. of school. Her dream was to work for Disney's Fairy Tale Weddings, which is impossible mm -hmm. to get into that team, nonetheless, straight out of school. But again, kind of going back to what Kate had said, she is a person who will not take no for an answer. She will find a way. If you have a will, you have a way. And this girl just worked her tail off in the internship that she had with Disney. She worked to build connections, always, always networking and seeing where, where she could volunteer and raise her hand to be like, oh, I'll take that on, I'll take that on. Um, and because of that, you know, she has a lot of leverage in her current position. But I think the other thing that's important is, and going back to what Kathy said, is sometimes, and Kelly, everybody said, is sometimes your dream does change, it evolves, right? So her original goal was to get, you know, into Disney fairytale, fairytale weddings, but she's now resetting her goal and figuring out, okay, now that I accomplished that, what's next for me? Mm -hmm. And going back to what Laura had asked me of, you know, what advice do I give to those students? It's, it's the irony of being like, you have it right here in your hands, right? If you're a member of the S of SEPA, you have everything that you need to be successful. You just have to do exactly what Kate said and apply yourself. You have to actually show up and take advantage of those membership benefits and apply 
you know, what you're learning, right, and what's available to you. So all all five of the programs that we offer, that's exactly why we offer them. We have an opportunities program that helps them get hands-on experience working day of events, whether that's set up during or tear down, um, so they can try everything out. And like Kelly said, I mean, you learn just as much from the things that you don't like as the things that you do like and helping you to kind of narrow down and figure out what niche you want to go into. Then we have an e-mentor program as Kathy had mentioned. So actually once you've kind of zeroed in on what it is that you want to do, associating and aligning yourself with people who are in life where you want to be, that is the definition of a mentor and being able to ask them and even look at their LinkedIn profile and see what, what what was their career progression, what skills do they have, and therefore what skills do I need to have to be in their shoes one day, right? Um, and being able to ask those questions and get that guidance. Then we've got an e-learning program that focuses on personal and professional development. So you can have all this, you know, experience and knowledge in the world, but if you can't speak in front of people, if you can't, um, you know, set goals, right, and be uh, time management, all of those other, you know, kind of interpersonal skills that it requires to be successful then you won't be, right? So that um, that satisfies that. Then we've got leadership as well. Um, so again, I, I think that's one of the biggest things that not just our industry needs, but every industry needs. There's things that you learn in leadership positions that you would never learn otherwise because you wouldn't have a reason to challenge yourself and grow in that particular area. And I, I talked to a president of a, a different organization last night, um, and I said, you're going to grow so much in this year. I was like, you're going to face all kinds of challenges. But what I loved, having graduated from school, having been in that position, is that I felt like I could accomplish anything that came at me because I'd already accomplished that, if that makes sense. Um, so, and with our accreditation program, it really lays the groundwork, it sets the roadmap for everything that you need to do. If you do these things, there's no way you won't expand your network. There's no way you won't have the experience that you need on your resume, not to mention all of our partners that are also kind of backing us in this mission to just make our memberships our membership and our members shine even brighter if they take advantage of it. So that's really what it is. I say, go and take advantage, like run like hell and get it, get as much as you can. And um, it's all there for you. You just got to take advantage. And, and every time I talk to event professionals who find out about SCPA, the first thing they always say is, I wish something like this existed when I was in school. And the second is, how can I help? Because we have everything that they need to be successful. That's fantastic. I want to just do like a slow clap right now. <laughs> yes, we need this for the events industry. That was that was awesome. Um, so that brings me to my next question. Um, so Kelly, we'll start with you on this one. Um, do you think that students are well equipped for events and the events world ahead of them, and why or why not? I think that they're equipped. Um, I think going through the programs that they have available to them today, that they're much better equipped than my generation was. Um, so many of my age group, which I'm not going to give my age, <laughs> but so many of my age group came into it from the back end. We came into it from a love for something else, usually the arts or entertainment, you know, another way. These students are focused on the events industry, live events, hospitality, I mean, they're, the programs are there, there for them. So I think if they're taking advantage and they're grasping everything that's being shown to them, that they, that's available to them, I think that, yeah, that they can come out and be, and be prepared. I feel like the resources are, are there for them. Mm -hmm. All right, Kathy, what do you think? Do you think that students are well equipped for the events world? Um, I do. Again, they're much better prepared now than when I first came into it, and um, I, I fell into it. I um, started in the hospitality industry um, and uh, met, uh, at that time, one of the hotel's biggest clients. Um, I ended up working for him, um, did his events, uh, ran his school. Um, and then ended up being able to get into event rentals because I had been planning these events at hotels. Um, so I, I feel they're much better prepared than um, years ago because there weren't a lot of hospitality programs in, in the colleges and universities or specialized training. Um, it was you were a waitress or a waiter and you went and, and were busing and, and doing food service and then you got into it or um, you were in theater and were designing sets and different things. So 
um, I feel today's students are much better prepared and with SEPA um, there's no reason why they shouldn't be well prepared um, to get into the industry. Mm -hmm. okay, they're much uh, better. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, I was just going to say they're, <laughs> they're a lot better prepared than they had been in the past, but, you know, I'm going to be the one that always kind of goes down the road of where can we do better, and I think that's mm -hmm. where Aubrey and SEPA steps in is where we have the core curriculum and we can teach on paper what needs to be done. There's really nothing that compares to that hands-on experience, getting the internships, getting connected, getting out there and seeing what really goes into it because you can be taught on paper, this is how you solve this formula and this is how you have plan B or C, but until you're standing in that room and something goes sideways, you need to know how to truly react to that. So I think she's helping to bring people really into the industry and give them that hands-on that's going to make them more well-rounded and more successful long-term within it. Mm -hmm. There's always gray area. Yeah, if I can jump in real quick, since we're, we're painting all these roses, right, let's talk about some of the things that aren't. What, what are the challenges even for SCPA? Being that we do cater to millennials, as much as I want to rep my generation, we've got so many great things going for us. There are challenges even with our membership, and I, I think this is kind of a, this is my PSA to even some of the other professional associations who reach out to me on a regular basis saying, hey, Aubrey, how can we increase our student membership? How can we get them involved? And the reality is that there are a lot of students that will join your association, just like kind of Kate mentioned as far as like the gen membership. Um, we have this in a sense entitlement mentality this like we pay money we expect a product so a lot of people will join SCPA thinking that I now have bought my success this is my ticket this is I just needed to sign up and now I'm going to be this event planner and that is absolutely not what it is the first video message that they get from me is congratulations I'm going to give you a pat on the back for that however this is where your journey actually starts and so SCPA what I think has also drawn membership to us and when people meet me is that I am not as as um, as snugly as I should be because I know that they need somebody to talk to them real talk and say, you know what, if you want to make it in this industry, you have got to apply yourself. And, and I'll go to chapters and I'll say, hey, um, I'm so glad that you showed up because that's, you know, 90% of it is showing up. But I will tell you right now, there's people in this room who will not make it in this industry, point blank, period. And people need to hear that. They have never had someone, they, millennials, we've always given trophies. We're always given awards for things. We're always given this recognition without much effort and that is not, <laughs> it's not going to make you successful if you can't take constructive criticism, if you can't take the good with the bad and understand that you do need to grow and stretch and develop yourself. And I think the definition of a mentor, the people that meant the most to me in life were people who told me, Aubrey, you're better than this, right? You can do better than this and I expect more from you. And having that person, that influence, and that's kind of what SCPA is for a lot of these members, it's a boot camp, it's kind of a reality check of, oh shit, like if I actually am going to do this, like I, I showed up, I committed in that, I put the money down, and I always say again that when members pay their dues, they're not paying SEPA, I say you're paying yourself, right? You are basically saying I am invested in myself, I believe enough in myself to make this investment because anything that comes in life for free has no value to it. We don't appreciate those things. So even if it is just a $30 annual membership, a lot of people filter out right at that decision process of do I submit you know, my, my credit card information or do I not? And so then we are able to filter down and get the people who are actually you know, more likely to succeed in this industry and that's what we want. Mm -hmm. Perfect, all that. Um, I'm gonna take just a quick moment. Um, so we still have a pretty full room here. Um, so if anybody who is watching today's episode live with us, um, please feel free to ask our panel a question. There is a, pan, a questions panel, um, so you can go ahead and enter in as many questions as you like. We'll go through all of those. So thank you to all who have already posted a question. Keep them coming. So just wanted to take a quick moment to say that um, because we are more than, surprisingly, more than halfway done with today's show. Um, so yeah, so please keep the questions coming. Um, now. I think every single one of you have mentioned internships um, a couple times throughout today's session. So um, that brings me to my next question, which is about internships. So um, what is one thing that event companies are doing totally wrong when it comes to building internship programs? And if I may throw in somebody's, um, 
somebody's name. Um, I know that there is the simplifiers, and I know that they do a ton of internships, and they like, hey, what's up, simplifiers in the UK? Um, I know it's Mary, Mary Baird Wilcock. Hello, hello. Um, I know that she just notices that there's a lot that event companies are doing wrong in the way of internships. So would love to hear from you all on what you think that event companies are doing wrong and how your company is doing something right. So uh, let's see. Let's start with Kate this time. No, I'm all over this one. I'm big on it because we, we go through interns a bit here. You know, it's something we utilize because I think that the upcoming generation has a lot to offer that maybe we aren't looking at as a whole with some of the ideas that they have. But I think that they're not always set up for success as far as having a true job and what you're doing. I've had so many that I speak to that they go in and they sit down and it's like, okay, our intern's here. And there's no real outline and there's no real guidance and they're not checking back in with them and letting them know where they're doing well, where they're failing, or they're just giving them the most menial work of, hey, I need you to go in back in and bust 50 of whatever this is. It's, you know, give them a true opportunity in my mind and, and set them up mm -hmm. to succeed and set it up to have a stronger program for interns moving forward. It does take work on the front side. I know that. It was a lot, a lot of hours to put it together, but it's worth it when you can give them a real role and tasks and feel like they're heard in some way. So there's my soapbox. I'll jump down and give someone else a chance. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. No, I love it. Yeah. I completely I, I agree, agree with that. I agree a lot with... Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, it's, you cannot just... Um, stick them in an office and um, not give them any guidance. Um, interns are not slave labor. Um, you need to be able to give them real roles and responsibilities um, so that they can ha learn and not just be your data process entry person and putting in all your registration people into a computer. Um, when I personally give tasks, it's to me, they need to know why they're doing it and how it affects the job that we're doing as a team overall, which again comes to the front end of planning, like Kate said. Um, in California, um, I don't know how it is in other states, um, and you cannot have interns. Uh, a real intern in the state of California needs to be in a um, accredited program. Um, and you need to know uh, what it is and who their instructors are and uh, you can't let them work for free. Um, you have to pay them even if it's minimum wage. So if you are interning and you um, in California and you're not getting paid, um, it's against the law. And um, to me the biggest thing is um, they need to feel like they're an integral part of your team and what you're doing so that they can be a part of the pathway to make the goals so that everybody is successful. It's, it's not just, um, here, go, um, go put these cards in order. Why are you doing it? This is important because, um, and I just, I feel interns are taken advantage of sometimes, a lot of times. I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, Will actually put in a, in a chat to me that, you know, that we should pay them. And, and I, like you brought up, it, it's actually, in fact, illegal if you have a student who's planning or executing on your events, and I mean they're working all hours of the day, night, yeah, yeah that's I mean that yeah that's legal. So even if I'm even so if you're just paying the minimum wage, you still yeah, need to pay them some. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think, Kelly? Well, it's funny um, when I was launching Event Curious a little. Four and a half years ago, I reached out to Mary before she had started the Apprentice program. Mm -hmm. I had been a fangirl of hers and had written about her in some articles I had done for magazines and, um, and knew how well her, her program was formed, put together. And so I reached out to her and she helped form ours in the early years, well before she started the Apprentice program. Um, so we are really slow here to hire interns. In four years, we've only had three. And um, it's because I'm very particular that there's a strategy, that there's education laid out for them from beginning to end, and that there's accountability for us and for them, and that they're paid. So we've been slow to bring, any, to bring them in because we do it at times where I know that our workflow with our clients, with their peak seasons, that we can work around that. So it's crazy because a, a lot of event companies will bring in interns during their peak season, because they look at them as, like someone said, slave labor, when I have a completely different 
view on that. I, I just don't think that that's there. It's a disservice to them and to your company that you're doing that, and it's a liability, like Kathy said. Right. Um, Aubrey, anything to add? Is there anything that you've observed in the? I want to. I'm sure you have tons, but uh, everything that you've observed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I just got back from Orlando and I ran a round table about, uh, about internships in the events industry and I'm going to be speaking, shameless plug, at TSC in 2017 on this very, very topic. Um, in a layman's terms, yes, we have a lot of work to do in the events industry specifically as it relates to internships because, yes, they are absolutely being uh, abused and not all. There are some situations where... Um, where, where people are doing great things. So Mary with the apprentice program, I sit on the advisory council for that and I could not be more proud of what she's doing to revolutionize internships in the events industry. I know personally the internship I had in college and again and I'm not above doing anything but I literally had to change my, the lady I was interning with, her dog's poopy diaper. That was that was one of my jobs. I don't know how that fit into my career. <laughs> but, wow. but, you know, so yes, absolutely. <laughs> there are, uh, there's some work to be done in that, that arena. Um, and yeah, you do have to look at the legality and figure out, I think it's more of a mind set, mindset shift of, are they adding more value to my company or are we adding more value to them as an individual? Because mm -hmm. an internship, by definition, should be adding value to that individual and, and the byproduct of that can be that it benefits your company. Of course, having extra hands mm -hmm. works, but that shouldn't be your primary focus. And I can't tell you how many calls I get from businesses who will literally be like, hey, I need somebody. And as I start to drill down into what it is, they need an employee, but they're trying to treat them like an intern that's unpaid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Wow. So I would imagine you leave that bullet point of the dog diapers off your resume, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> believe that. That's so crazy to me. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Um, great. Uh, so we have another question in. Uh, this comes from Judy. Hello, Judy Brillhart. Uh, Hi. Hi. Yes. Huge. Hi, Judy. Clearly. This is the Judy Brillhart fan, fan club. <laughs> um, so we've touched on this a little bit, but um, maybe we can all dive in. Um, so Judy asks, what's the most valuable type of education for students? I know we talked about hands-on experience with events, classroom, networking, um, and how can we better offer education outside of the classroom for these emerging professionals? So that's a great question. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Can I jump in real quick? Yes, of course. One of the programs that I failed to mention that we do offer is our scholarship program. So it's my personal opinion, because there's not a standardization of education for the events industry across the board, across universities, et cetera, there's no one set curriculum, I personally believe that the best place for our membership and the future event professionals to get educated is at conferences. So we've partnered with BizBash and the special event. We work with them to send our student members and leaders to these conferences so that not only do they get the networking, which is super important, they get the education, they get to the attend the sessions and they work behind the scenes at the show so they get the hands-on experience all at the same time and those three in one you, you can't beat that so that's really what we're an advocate of and pushing to to get that uh, education especially with as everybody's mentioned the the industry is ever evolving so the only way to stay on top of slash ahead of it is to be at those conferences mm -hmm. one of the things that's worked for us is shadowing is to have um, those interns shadow with us on meetings with our clients, um, on the behind the scenes with our clients, and also shadowing the biggest, like the biggest area where I see growth is having them shadow with us at industry events. So they get to see how someone established in the industry, how they network, how you work a room, um, how you meet new people, you get to introduce them to new new people, old people. It's that's where I've seen the biggest growth in our interns. I, I agree. I was going to say um, networking, um, joining if they're able to the different associations that do have student level memberships, um, whether it's ILEA or WIPA or um, NACE or any of the other ones, and getting in there and um, meeting people. This industry is all about relationships and the more you have contacts um, the better you are all around. Um, I know one time um, since Judy asked the question I had a question about a hotel contract. 
I know that I can always reach out from San Francisco to Judy in Boston and um, always get an answer on hotel contracts and attrition and all those things that are not my core competency. Um, so it's definitely having those relationships and people um, in all of the disciplines that can be there to support you um, when you need the help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, part of being in the organizations, I think, is partnering with some of the professional ones at the same time. So when you're in one of the student ones, is going to them and saying, hey, this is the type of class we'd like to have. I recently did one that was kind of the hands-on 101 um, workshop, I would say, of having some of the professional members come in, kind of teach maybe just five to seven minutes of what they do, and then having it so that afterwards you could sit and talk with them and pick their brain if it you know, trip something that you were like, oh, I need to know more about that, or that may not be my strength. And, you know, I always encourage people when they're looking to learn, pick what doesn't always sound fun. I know that's like a terrible thing to say, but it's the truth. If you're not great with accounting or there's something that you don't feel strong on, that's what you should gravitate towards to better round yourself as a person. You know, I, I don't love to do accounting, but it's part of my job. That's why I stepped onto NACE as treasurer first to step out of my comfort zone to somewhere that would better me professionally in the long run so that I am more prepared to continue to grow my career as well. So that's the advice I would give as far as what type of education to look at. Mm, perfect. Um, and then how can employers leverage SEPA, so this kind of goes back to the internship question, um, leverage SEPA to find their next great employee? There are several different ways that they can do that. So uh, the first is we have an opportunities database. So if you need volunteers through our opportunities program, you need interns or you're looking to hire, you can post your jobs for free with SCPA. And um, just for those people who are watching this, it actually creates a complimentary account for you on our website. So, um, and that's our way of thinking you for investing back into us. Um, another way is through our e-mentor program. So same thing, you get a complimentary, um, our professional membership right now is invite only. So it's you servicing and feeding back into us, we're going to pay you back in, in having you included in our family in that respect. So uh, serving as a mentor through our e-mentor program, and that's a three-month program. You can participate fall, summer, or spring, and you basically just fill out this little form. You let us know what your expertise is in the industry, and we have students who fill out similar forms saying what they want to learn, and we'll pair a student with professional based on those similar interests and an email introductory uh, introduction and then they have those three months to basically have a pen pal relationship via email communication um, and then the third thing is guest speaking so all of our chapters have guest speakers come in every single semester and even at a national level we have uh, webinars three times a year and we also have things called hangouts which Kelly um, uh, everyone's participated on and so it's a professional speaker who uh, is kick-ass in the industry that our members would never have the opportunity to speak to otherwise and it's a private 30-minute session with 10 people the speaker a moderator and eight of our student members and there's no formal presentation the students just get to ask exactly what they want to ask and then get to learn exactly what they want to learn so uh, if you're in, interested in any of those things feel free to contact me info at student event planners association.com and we will hook you up we would love for you guys to be a part of our organization in that respect. I think a lot of the folks in the room could definitely lead one of those sessions for sure because I, I can just tell like Judy for example she'd be great for that so mm -hmm. Judy if you're still on you should do that. <laughs> you're awesome. Um, Judy who's cool. the current who's the current president for ILEA. She is. She Ooh. is indeed. Woo! ILEA. Um, all right so surprisingly we've made it. It's, it's almost the entire hour here so I have one final question, and we ask this on every single show. Um, do you gals have any new cool resources that you'd like to share? Websites, blogs, podcasts, um, YouTube channels, um, anything at all? Um, and I'll start with you, Kate. Uh, what resources do you have to share? Well, I've loved this one recently since it was introduced to me, so everyone watching, good job on that. Um, I like following along, too, with Event Manager blog. They do a great job with it, mm -hmm. and Smart Meetings is another one that I think they're, they're doing really well with bringing content that's relevant to our industry and in a unique way. All right. Well, Kathy, what are your... Oh, Kelly, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. I was just saying how great all three of those choices or those oh, yeah. were. Okay. Go ahead, Kathy. But do you have yeah, any resources? I, I guess we'll just have you. I agree. Oh. I agree. I'm um, I'm the older one in this group, and I'm not as technically savvy um, as a lot of the millennials and people within um, SEPA. 
uh, but I do follow, um, I'm big, I do a lot of Instagramming, uh, following people, getting new ideas that way, and again, always with Facebook. Uh, didn't get into Snapchat, um, but I'm very big onto the social media of Instagram and Facebook, and um, I love uh, learning from other people that way and getting ideas. Um, so that's basically where I go. And uh, Kathy, do you have any Instagram accounts that you follow that you just you check every single day and they always have great ideas? Any specifics? Um, I'm very much a flower fiend, um, so I do <laughs> follow out of LA. Um, I follow Mark's Garden, um, Petals LA. Um, I follow um, Mindy Weiss, um, Marcy Blum out of New York, um, mm -hmm. a lot of the top people, um, and then just people in my own industry, um, you know, following other rental companies uh, on the East Coast to know what they're doing and what's trending out there. Um, sometimes they're always a little behind us here on the West Coast or vice versa, um, but definitely it's a way to keep up um, uh, with ideas and trends. Um, I, Pinterest too, but I I have my feelings about Pinterest and, and I don't always, um, um, it, it, it's to me not the right place. Um, it, it gives people a false sense of what can be done in the industry for what price. Um, so that's mm -hmm. something that um, I, I do do Pinterest and, and follow that, but um, yeah, knowing, like I follow um, a rental company in South Africa um, to see what they're doing and the amazing products and things that they're doing over there, which I don't see always happening here in our industry here in the United oh. States. So um, in Dubai, there's some amazing rental uh, and professionals Ooh. over there in Dubai. Yes, Aubrey. Um, so <laughs> I'm, uh, that's how I find out what's going on. And uh, besides, you know, trade shows and conferences and that. Mm -hmm. Great. Everyone should follow Kathy because Kathy posts these amazing inspiration posts. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your handle, well, I know your Twitter handle is Ask for Kathy. Um, mm -hmm. What's your Instagram handle? Same, Ask for Kathy. Same thing? Mm -hmm. Ask for Kathy. Mm -hmm. All right. If you need inspiration, folks, Kathy's got it. All right. Um, Aubrey, I know you've basically just listed a million resources, but um, obviously, SEPA, where can people find SEPA online? Uh, studenteventplannersassociation.com, and typically our handles are official SEPA, and then of course our chapters have some of their own uh, handles if they're on Instagram and Twitter. Um, but personally, resources that I love to leverage are my two favorite podcasts are Gather Geeks, which is by BizBash, and Social Tables has a bomb.com podcast as well, so shout out to Laura. Um, and then I wrote down some others, so non-industry uh, related, Marie TV, uh, I know Kelly and I both love uh, Marie Forleo, so she's a resource, TED Talk, love them, and then my recent slash rediscovery of obsession is Audible. I love audiobooks, so um, if you aren't on Audible, we have the ability to send you your first book for free, so if you want to hit me up, I'm happy to share some books, and one I'm listening to right now is Big Magic. Freaking awesome for anybody who is creative-minded or wants to be, um, it'll change your world, so I would highly recommend. Great. Is it Big Magic or Dig Magic? Big, B-I-G. Oh, great. Awesome. By, by the author of Eat, Pray, Love. Awesome. Oh, okay. Very good. Awesome. Um, and then this is the real last question. Uh, where can everyone follow, connect with you ladies on um, social media? Can they send you an email? Um, what's the best way to connect with each of you or the preferred way? On social media, you need to know in advance. It's just all my stuff is at Kate Pate, but know that you're going to get the real deal truth and sometimes some curse words if I've had a glass of wine. It just happens. <laughs> Maybe if I haven't. But I always, I'm always i really quick to answer emails, too, if that's you know preferred. It's just Kate at creativecoverings.com. I'm, I'm attached to this thing all day long, so you're going to find me one way or another. Love it. Right. Uh, same with me. Um, you know, we just said my Instagram and Facebook and Twitter are Ask for Kathy, um, mm -hmm. and my email is Kathy with a K dot newbie N E W B Y at Outlook dot com. Awesome. My, my email is Kelly at eventcurious dot com, and all company accounts on social are eventcurious, so you can follow there. 
or personal for me. I kind of separate <laughs> so that I can mm -hmm. use curse words and all that good stuff. Um, <laughs> it's Fedway IRL on Instagram. And then my passion project is Event Professionals Run the World. It's a fitness project. And that's Event Profs Run on Instagram. So, love it. Yep. And then I'm the only Aubrey Nowiski in the entire world. So, <laughs> just so get much. that name and Google it. Feel free to add me on anything like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I'm a very um, open open book in that respect. And then my email address is Aubrey A U B is in boy R I at Student Event Planners Association .com. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much. Um, just be sure to stay on after we um, say goodbye here because um, we want to formally thank you. But um, thank you to everyone who logged on. I think. Everybody stay from start to finish. That's great and lots of awesome questions. Um, so for anybody who is watching and loved today's show, um, please join us next week. This is a weekly show. Um, if you ever have ideas on who you want to meet on the next episode of Event Icons, be sure to tweet me. Um, I'm at Laura Lopez, but the L's are ones. Um, I unfortunately am not the only Laura Lopez in the world. So feel mm -hmm. free to tweet me um, or uh, Will Curran. His is just, it's Will Curran on Twitter. Let us know who you want to hear. Um, you can also catch the recording uh, of today's show. It's uh, helloendless.com forward slash blog. Um, so we will see you uh, next week for another uh, round of event icons. Thanks again for everybody for tuning in. Thanks for having Bye, us. Everyone.